Welcome to the lecture number 38 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the last class, we solved couple of problems based on the rotational spectroscopy. This year, in this class, I will look at a problem on the vibration spectroscopy and some aspects of the electronic transitions. In your vibration spectrum, okay, one uses harmonic oscillator as a, so we have talked about it, one uses harmonic oscillator because at the bottom of the potential one can always have the harmonic oscillator and the wave functions look like this. Okay. I told you that you know the potential k is given by d square v by d r square or d r square evaluated r naught. So, if the r naught is your equilibrium distance. Okay. So, this is nothing but the second derivative of the potential at evaluated at the equilibrium geometry. Okay, and the bottom of the well one can always consider as a harmonic potential. Now, when you have a harmonic potential, uh, the frequency V naught is given by, by the way harmonic oscillator has only one frequency, the fundamental frequency V naught that is given by 1 over 2 pi square root of k by mu. Okay. Now, if I can measure V naught, okay, I will be able to get the force constant. Now, force constant is nothing but it is the stiffness of the bond. Okay. What is stiffness of the, it is like a stiffness of a spring whether the spring is strong or whether the spring is weak. Okay. So, force constant tells you whether the bond is strong bond or a weak bond. Now, let us apply this concept to uh, HCL again 1 and 35 and DCL 2 and 35. Okay. When I measure the IR spectrum of this, what I get is a fundamental frequency which is given by for this value, this is nu naught bar because I am measuring in the centimeter inverse that is 2885.1 centimeter inverse. And for this, it will be, this will be 2091.1 centimeter inverse. So, I know the value of nu. And I also know nothing but your nu or v naught, nu naught. So, let us me call this as a nu. call this as nu dot frequency. So, nu naught is nothing but equal to nu naught bar into c. That is just the transformation between the um, velocity and, but you see since we are measuring uh, in centimeter, this must be measured in centimeters per second. So, that is nothing but 2.997 into 10 power 10 centimeters per second. This is per second. So, this will be um, centimeter inverse. So, that will be nothing but uh, second inverse. So, you have that. Now, if I now want to calculate this, so nu naught, so when I have what I have given is nu naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of k by mu. So, I can slightly rewrite this equation. So, this will be nothing but nu naught is nothing but nu bar into c. So, nu bar into c is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of k by mu. So, this I can always write as square root of k by mu is equal to 2 pi nu naught bar c. Now, I can take a square that implies k equals to 2 pi nu bar c into mu square. So, I need to get that. Now, I already know nu bar. Okay. So, for nu bar or nu naught bar 
for CL thirty five is two eight eight five point one centimeter inverse and new naught bar for TCL is 2091.1 centimeter inverse. Oh, I think I made a mistake. This should not be like this. This should be square of this, okay? Because I am taking a square, okay? Then, yeah, sorry for that mistake. So, now k will be nothing but Two pi c nu naught bar whole square into mu. Now this will be nothing but two pi square is nothing but four pi square c square nu naught bar square into mu. So this will be nothing but four pi square. Okay, c square is nothing but two point nine nine seven. Into 10 power 10. I told you we have to take centimeters per, se uh, per second as a speed of light. Whole square and the new bar square is 2885.1 square into mu. Okay. Mu is nothing but for HCL, H135Cl, mu will be nothing but. 35 divided by 36 into 1.66 into 10 power minus 27 kg. So, if I solve this, I will get value of 476.4 Newton per meter. Okay. Similarly, if I take k is equal to 2 pi c nu naught bar square to mu, but now it is 2 h C L 35. If I plug it in 4 pi square, C square will be same 2.997 into 10 power 10 square. Now this will be 2885 in the case of HCL, but this will be 209. 1.1 square because the frequency has changed into even the uh, reduced mass has changed. So, this will be 70 divided by 37 into 1.66 into 10 power minus 27. Now, when I do this, I will get 486.4 Newton per meter. Okay. Now, you see the force constant of HCL and DCL is actually not exactly equal, even though one would expect that the force constant should be equal. Okay. Now, of course, there is an assumption that the frequency, everything else are fundamental constants, nothing has changed, except this frequencies are one which are measured experimentally. Okay. So, if these, if one assumes that the frequencies that you have measured are accurate, then I will see that the force current of HCL is marginally different than force current of DCL. It is about by 10 Newton per meter. Okay. The stiffness of bonds is when you do isotopic substitution may not be exactly the same as uh, exactly the same. Okay. So, when you measure the vibrational frequency, the moral of the story that I am going to tell you is that when you measure the vibrational frequencies, you can convert the vibrational frequencies into the stiffness of the bond. Okay. One can say the bond is stronger or bond is weaker or you know something like the stiffness of the bond. Okay. By this token, you can tell that the DCL bond is more stronger or more stiffer than the HCL bond. So, the vibrational spectroscopy tells you about the stiffness of the bond or the strength of the bond. But the bond distances are measured by the rotational spectroscopy which I talked about in the last lecture. There is one more factor that I want to teach you is something called related to electronic transitions.
Okay. Now, if I go back few lectures, we will see the electronic transitions T m i is given by psi electronic excited state mu e psi electronic ground state multiplied by chi nuclear excited state multiplied by chi nuclear ground state. So, let me define what it is psi prime e is wave function of the excited state. Okay, of course, this has to be electronic wave function. Psi e double prime is electronic wave function of the ground state. And mu e is the electronic dipole moment. And chi n prime is the nuclear wave function of the excited state. and chi double prime is the nuclear wave function of the ground state. Okay, there is one more thing that I have to tell you is that to get to this TMI we assume that mu naught is nuclear is approximately equal to 0. Okay. Uh, this is Condon approximation. which says that the nuclear dipole moment is uh, does not change related to the electronic coordinates or changes very little with respect to the nuclear uh, electronic coordinates. So, this is the Condon approximation. So, to get this TMI we have used the Condon approximation. Now, this will tell you whether the transition is going to be allowed or not, but one of the important factors is this okay, is the overlap. So, chi n prime, chi n double prime, this is nothing but overlap of the nuclear wave functions of the ground and the excited state. But probability of transition P is equal to modulus of T m i square. So, when I use that the probability must be proportional to modulus of chi n prime chi n double prime square and this value is called Frank Condon factor. Okay. Frank Condon factor is nothing but the overlap of the nuclear wave functions of the ground and the excited states square of it. Okay. Now, there is one small theorem that I want to prove is that now let us suppose chi n prime is a or wave functions. Okay. Let me call it some quantum number, let me give some quantum number f because final no excited state. Okay. So, wave functions of the excited state nuclear Schrodinger equation and chi double prime n and chi i is given by are given by wave functions of the ground state nuclear 
Schrodinger equation. Okay. Now, because these are the solutions of Schrodinger equation, they should form complete set. So, you have a complete set chi prime n with quanta number f and forms complete set. Similarly, we have chi double prime n i also forms a complete set. Now, there is something that you must always remember is that whenever I have a complete set, okay, any other wave function can always be written as a linear combination of those complete set wave functions. So, which means I can always write chi double prime n n f should be equal to sigma over let us say k c k chi n And I can always write sorry, this is I F is equal to sigma over K, let us say J C J chi N J double prime. So, one can always express the nuclear wave function of the excited states as a linear combination of the ground state wave functions and one can always express the uh, nuclear wave function of the ground state as a linear combination of the excited state wave functions. Okay. Now, if I have any, uh, if I take chi um, ground state nuclear wave function i, this wave function to be equal to sum over j chi c j n j. Now, if I assume that all functions are orthonormal, all functions are normal, then it turns out that c j square modulus of j should be equal to 1 because total coefficients should add up to 1. Okay. So, this is the let us look at chi prime n let us say some function f integral chi double prime uh, n. So, I want to look at this. So, this can I can always write it sum over chi n f, but this wave function I can always write it as this. So, this is equal to sum over j okay, chi prime n j c j. Okay. Now, whenever this j will become equal to f whenever, so this value of the integral will be will be equal to c j delta f j. So, whenever uh, f and j are not equal, then this overlap integral will go to 0, otherwise it will survive and become c j. Okay. Now, this is only for one wave function. Now, if I want to take over all the wave, all the final wave function, if I f chi prime n comma f sigma over j chi prime n j c j this will be nothing but sigma over f ok each of the time will get j ok but j is equal to f ok so if i get f so what i will only survive when f is equal to say what will get is c f Now, I do not want this, what I want is the modulus of chi n f f chi double prime n i square sigma over f. This will be nothing but sigma over f okay, c f square. 
actually not like this because you have to individually square them not the sum of the square so square of this. So, this is nothing but sum over f c f square. So, we know that when they are orthogonal and f or j or anything they are all dummy indices should be equal to 1. Okay. So, the moral of the story is when you have an electronic transient sum of the Frank Condon factors must be equal to 1 which simply means that when I have a probability p that is equal to uh, And then you have probability p for an electronic transition going from a uh, ground state to excited state. This must be equal to square of the tangent moment integral square. So, this will be nothing but psi e excited state mu e psi e ground state square. In my, multiplied by chi nuclear prime chi nuclear double prime square. But this is only for one wave function. So, if you have to look at all the nuclear wave function, so then it should be sum over all the nuclear wave functions f. Then, but this sum over all nuclear wave function is equal to 1. So, that is nothing but psi e mu e psi e square because this is equal to 1. So, if you take the electronic transitions over various nuclear states vibrations and rotations and if you add all of them it should be equal to get equal to 1. So, the, the contribution of the nuclear wave function is only partial every nuclear wave function is only partial it can go from 1 to 0 if only if it is 1 then there are other don'ts others do not contribute if it is 0 that will not contribute everything else will contribute. So, the sum of all the nuclear wave functions overlap must be equal to 1. Okay. So, that is the factor. So, what is that sum of Frank Condon factors? for an electronic transition should be equal to 1. Now, see the equilibrium distance R naught in the ground this is ground state. this is excited state they are equal. So, what happens the transition from v is equal to 0 to v is equal to v prime is equal to 0 this is going to be most overlapping. But instead of that if you have something like that where r naught is the same. So, if you make a vertical transition then So, we the lowest energy transition will not have the overlap, overlap will be the next vibration level not the v is equal to 0, but v is equal to 1 and uh, sorry not v is equal to uh, uh, sorry 0, but v is equal to 1 and v is equal to 2. So, the transition will shift. So, based on whether the transition will be shifted or not shifted one can tell whether the geometry has changed or not the geometry changes is larger, larger than the, the more and more the geometry changes the more and more the shift in the transition will happen. Okay. So, by the way this is called a vertical transition and the principle that governs is called Frank Condon principle. Okay. We will stop it here 
and this brings to the end of my lecture series in my this course. We have covered in this course how the uh, transition moment integral comes by and use the transition integral to get to various uh, rot various spectroscopic techniques, rotational, vibrational and the electronic transitions. You can always give me a feedback about, about this course and I am always reachable on my email address that are uh, even when you, this course is not running you can always write to me on naresh at chem.iitb.ac.in my email address at the department of chemistry IIT Bombay to reach out on any questions that are related to this course. Thank you very much.